Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and for today's episode we have a very special guest with us. He is a real estate salesperson based in the US, specifically in Texas. He is a salesperson of EXP Realty, Kobe Sin. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me on, on your podcast, Alex. It's really an honor to be here. Um, it was great having you on my show uh, just a couple of weeks ago, so I'm, I'm really glad to be uh, returning the favor for you as well. Yeah, it's an exchange because last week I guessed it on your <laughs> podcast and now you're in my podcast. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like an exchange. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into real estate? Yeah, so that's that's a that's an interesting question um, because um, I got into real estate a little bit um, a little bit a little bit differently than most people, I guess, because um, so I was a I was straight out of high school when I first got into real estate. So a little bit about me. I'm 21 years old now. I've been in real estate for just a little over two years now. And when I first started, I was straight out of high school. So when I was in high school, I was doing the, you know, doing the high school thing where you were supposed to go and get good grades, and I, which what's I did. The, what's the high school thing? <laughs> yeah, studying uh, good grades. and getting good grades. Yeah. Right. Studying, getting good grades, applying for college in your senior year. Right. And that's, that's what I did. Um, you know, and, and I got into a, a pretty decent, you know, college here in, in, in the States. Uh, but um, I never really just, it never felt right for me, if that, if that makes sense. So I, I, I knew deep down that was not something that I wanted to do at all. I didn't, you know, I want, always wanted to run my own business and, you know, going to college just almost seemed like a big waste of time and money <laughs> uh, for me. So it was it was uh, about July of that year when I when I graduated, um, I, I came across a, a family friend of ours who recommended that I, I read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, which um, you know I cannot thank them. Yeah, and I cannot thank them enough for that because well, that's actually the first book that I read that made me want to become an entrepreneur. I read that back in really? high school as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that it's it's such a great book with you know such universal appeal because it it breaks down you know how the world works economically. Uh, in a very in, simple in terms. In very right? simple terms, yes, I agree. Like it's not <laughs> the first book about personal finance or yeah. finding financial freedom, but I think it's one of the first books that really that's really simple. You know, easy to get. Like as as yeah. high schoolers, we were able to get it and understand it and change our mindset. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think, I, I don't know if it was Robert Kiyosaki who came up with the, the term passive income, but I think that that term changed my life because I've never heard of it before. And I always thought, you know, <clears throat> the best thing was to just work for yourself, but I was still trading time for money. So um, that really changed my whole perspective on things. I was having like my own, uh, you know, my own uh, enlightenment moment for for about a week after reading that book i was just like whoa what, what's going on here but um That's really great. completely shifted yeah just just completely shifted my reality and i just i just made the decision so it's crazy because um i literally made the decision to not go to university uh two weeks before i was actually scheduled to fly out to um so it was an out-of-state college it was two weeks before well, i was scheduled to fly out to uh that state uh, which is Illinois. How, and did then your, we, how did your parents react though? Since it like, sounded like everything was all set, that you were going to go to college and then two weeks before that, you changed your mind. Right, yeah. So it, it's pretty crazy because I mean, um, I've been, you know, kind of having doubts throughout the entire, the entire process, right? But so they kind of knew already, but uh, they were very supportive because um, um, at the time I said, you know, hey, I, I can still hold the position and if I this doesn't work out in a year or two, I, I can always just reattend um, as somebody who's taken a couple of years off. So we always had that backup, you know, you know, for better or for worse, we had that backup as a net to catch me essentially to go back on. But they were very supportive. So like I said, you know, I was two weeks out. We couldn't even return the plane tickets. They wouldn't even let us return the plane tickets. But, you know, um, my parents are actually very supportive. They're, they were completely on board with what I'm doing uh, at the time. <laughs> and uh you know, even, even now as well, um, you know, at, at this point. So, um, but yeah, no, it, it was two weeks out. And then I just said, you know, Hey, not going to do it anymore. I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay home and I'm going to get into real estate because I thought that had, um, it had the most potential for, uh, for earning passive income. And it was just a very stable industry. And there was a lot of people in it that I can, I can learn a lot from. So I, I, that's why I decided to get my real estate license was actually so that I can be able to offer some value to potential real estate investors who've been in the business 
for a long time. And then I can trade that as a way for me to actually learn from them. So that's how I got into real estate. Um, you know, the very long version of it, <laughs> it you know, the, the long version of how I got into real estate. But um, that's that's basically what it is. It was me having an epiphany moment uh, in the middle of my my uh, my last summer as a as a high school high school student, and then you know just kind of taking the risk, taking the jump, and uh, taking it all the way from there to to where I am right now. You know, Robert and, Kiyosaki through that book has really helped a lot of people, like including the two of us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's been a lot of fun. So that I will say that it's been it's been a it's been very a, a great a great kind of two years for me probably the best two years of my life I was saying so so how has the past two years been like coming out from high school having did you have any prior experience with like sales and marketing or with real estate in general before entering mm -hmm. into exp realty uh no actually I have no experience and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go and get my real estate license right so my big goal was to be um, to earn the passive income side of the business, right? So I wanted to earn, you know, residual income from investments, from, you know, cash flowing business, whatever that might be. And, um, I, and, it, and I knew being a real estate agent wasn't necessarily gonna, gonna achieve that. It was more of a sales job where you're trading a sale for, um, for a commission. But I, I do understand that there's a potential to do that. So I, I got my real estate license, like I said, as a way to trade my time <laughs> in order to learn from people who, um, who can actually teach me something. So that was one of the things that I, I was very honest to myself about is that I have no experience in sales. I have no experience in marketing. Um, I, I barely owned any real estate or I, I barely owned any uh, social media profiles at the time uh, at all. So <clears throat> I wasn't very familiar with how to market on social media. Actually, I probably didn't even know that was a thing at the time, but um, no, no, <laughs> no prior experience in real estate uh, or marketing or sales. So I, I wanted to jump in as, as a way for, uh, myself to be able to provide some value so that I can actually learn from somebody who's come before me, which is uh, exactly what I what I've done. So basically, what you're saying is you became a salesperson to learn more about the industry and about investing and how to get passive income because Perch Dot Poor Dot is really more of about getting passive income through real estate. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I did. Um, yeah, that was my goal was to, to earn, earn a residual income, passive income to be able to have financial freedom as early as possible. And then, um, so yeah, that's always been my mindset is that if I was going to trade my time for something, uh, it was going to pay me 10 times more in the future. And that's what I always wanted to do. So yeah, that's exactly why I got my, my salesperson's, uh, became a salesperson was so that I can now be in the industry, uh, in, in a, accepted accepted manner where I, I actually have some kind of professional training behind me and then um you know take it from there yeah that book also really got me interested in real estate after rich dad poor dad reading that book i started reading other books similar to that and also about real estate so other rich dad poor dad books which were more heavily <coughs> leaning towards how to earn through real estate yeah so i guess that's also one of the yeah. reasons why i i've become a real estate broker now yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I think that's, um, it's, it's one of those things. Cause I think a lot of people just think of real estate when they think, uh, you know, of, of business and, and creating wealth. I mean, I think it was like the, every, you know, every wealth, uh, you know, every wealthy person has built their, their wealth through real estate, right? Everybody has, uh, at least owns some real estate in their portfolio, um, because it's such a great asset. It doesn't matter where you are. So it's a very universal asset in terms yes, of what yes, it, what it is. it's able to offer. Yes, as oh. they say, the best investment on earth is earth itself. Yeah. Right, exactly. I, yeah. also notice with my, I also notice with my clients, <laughs> like my the, my clients who are business owners, even though their business is not, not necessarily real estate, they usually invest in real estate. So they invest regularly. And one yeah. advantage that entrepreneurs or business owners can have by owning a lot of real estate is they have a lot of... of of real estate assets to mortgage in case they need funding for expansion mm -hmm. or a new business. So usually they have a line yeah. at the bank and then the collateral is the real estate property. So the more properties they can put up as collateral, the bigger the, their line is. So more money yeah. available to you as a business owner. Right, exactly. It's it's such a 
it's such a versatile asset that you can you can you know like you said you can borrow against it um you can leverage you know, from the it. Bank. there are so many ways you can leverage <laughs> your real estate asset right exactly yep and it, it's one of the few things that you can actually see as an investment as well like a lot of people invest in businesses and um and that's how they value businesses really it's just on their physical assets anyway so you know some businesses could be valued as just just on how much real estate they own um but <laughs> that's essentially you know it, it is one of those things where um it's very universal and because everybody uses it in a one way or another, because we just, we need shelter <laughs> as, as people. So it, it, you know, it's, it's that, sim- it's that simplicity and concept that gives it such versatility when it comes to, you know, being, a, you know, industry and a, and a business in itself. There's so many real estate agencies there in the U S right. So why did you decide to yeah. go with EXP Realty? Right. So that's a pretty interesting story on itself. And I was actually just, uh, <laughs> I was just telling our, uh, our team, you know, that story just now. Um, but <laughs> so <laughs> one of the things I did in the beginning was that I didn't really know. So in the U.S., uh, as a salesperson, we have to join under a brokerage. We have to work under a company as, as a salesperson. And then one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to work with an investor friendly or an investing focused kind of brokerage as well. So brokerages that in, at least encourage their agents or don't, at the very least, they don't prevent their agents from making their own deals essentially is what I wanted to do. And um, I went on this online forum uh, called Bigger Pockets. So, yeah, I'm familiar. <coughs> excuse me. They yeah, you familiar with Bigger Pockets? They yeah, they do. Well. Yeah, so Bigger Pockets, one of the one of the very popular real estate uh, forums online. And then I, I went on there and I literally, I just typed a little, little message, a little uh, kind of like a, a comment. I was just asking for some help. I was like, Hey guys, you know, if you guys know of any real estate brokerages that are, are very investor friendly, that's what I'm looking for. And I just put that message out there into the universe for people to look at. <laughs> and then somebody uh, reached out to me. Uh, it was very nice. He told me that a little bit more about his experience, uh, which is, you know, the, very similar as mine. He has a little bit more experience than I do, uh, especially on the investing side. And uh, he was just, uh, you know, very helpful in the beginning. Didn't, didn't talk too much about EXP. Uh, But, you know, later on, he just asked me, you know, you know, if you're willing to take a look at this, uh, this brokerage model, I think is very helpful for you. So I did. I took a look at the company and it just made a lot of sense. Right. So as from my, my perspective as an investor, EXP Realty was able to offer, you know, me and, and every other agent who's with them something that no other brokerage, at least, in, you know, in, in the U.S., <coughs> what, what it did at the time, which is three ways of running income. And then two of those ways are wealth building uh, income streams. So we offer agents uh, at the time, you know, or right now we offer agents three different ways to earn income. Uh, one, obviously, through sales, uh, sales from real estate sales. And then the second one is equity through uh stock ownership. So every agent of the company is actually an owner of the company. And that, you know, actually was very appealing to me because that was one of the ways that, you know, I thought, Hey, you know, you know, I made a sale uh, in real estate, you know, I can actually own a piece of the company. So that's actually paying me in assets versus just cash that I would spend or save or whatever. So, so it's, it was a, actually it's a publicly listed company. Yes. It's publicly traded on NASDAQ, uh, on the NASDAQ exchange. Um, yeah, and, and the agents are are the uh, stock owners of, of the company as well. So we get shares of the company for, uh, you know, just <coughs> doing agent things, uh, selling houses, essentially, closing transactions. So those are the two that really jumped out. And then the third one is, you know, there's those two got me to join the company. And the third one got me to stay, which is uh, <coughs> our revenue sharing team building model, which has been revolutionary. Um, it has been my main focus for the past two years. And, um, you know, just for, you know, as an example, it has allowed me, somebody who's no experience in, in real estate to be able to build a team of now 30 agents and, you know, 12 different states and actually out of the country as well, which has been an absolutely fantastic experience for me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to growing that as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Like being just two years in, you've already built a team of 30 agents. Yeah, I know it's, it's hard to believe, even for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's it's a little bit different because I never I never thought I would be doing this. You know, I, I always thought you know maybe I would be building a team in real estate. I always thought that was an interesting kind of brokerage model, maybe be a broker owner even. <clears throat> but um, no, it, it was just such a it's such an opportunity for me, uh, you know, for everybody really 
to kind of take advantage of it because there's no, uh, there's really no experience or I would say no capital expenses involved in it because there's very little risk for me to go out there and, and do what I do. And it achieves the same thing that I wanted to, which is perfect for me because it's a residual income. And that's, that's, that was my goal from the beginning as well was to earn residual income through, through real estate. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm very excited about it as well. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. And you know, it's going to be amazing, but what you would be able to achieve like 10 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to think about that, you know, 10 years from now, cause I, like I was, I'm only 21 years old. Right. Yeah. But so. they say that you need 10,000 hours or that's around 10 years of experience to be an expert in any industry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's good. You know, it's good to start early. I, I, and I understand that. So I'm trying to take advantage of that, you know, as, as much as possible because, you know, I have the luxury of time. So I want to use it as wisely as I possibly can instead of wasting it like you no know, unfortunately a lot of a lot of people do it's just they don't realize it early on enough and then they're at a point in their life where you know they feel like it's too late so yeah, i think it's never too late but you would definitely have an unfair advantage if you were able to realize what you want to do earlier like for you or even me like i started with real estate at 23 so yeah. now that i'm 11 years into the business there's a lot of leverage when you're able to start yeah. younger. Yeah, definitely. I think so as well. Um, yeah, like, <clears throat> like I agree with you. You said like, there's, there's no, like, it's never too late, but if you can start early, you always have that luxury huge, of time, it's right? It's a huge advantage. Yeah. Cause there are more things <coughs> that you can do. You can go farther. Right. Exactly. It's like it, there are, a lot of my mentors who came before me says that I have a longer runway like on an airplane uh, when you're taking off. So if you have a longer runway, right, you can take off further. So I think that's that's one of the things that I'm, I'm very grateful about that uh, I was able to find this very early on in my life so that I have a, a longer runway to make my mistakes early and then take off later on as well. So what do you think, like, for example, for those who are still in high school, who don't know yet what they want to do with your life, what do you think made you figure out earlier what you really wanted to do because there are times when you know you don't you don't really know it yet even though you're already a yeah. college graduate and you don't you're not sure yet that is this really what you want to do so what advice can you give right yes that's that's pretty interesting and i've always been i'm very introspective and i think about this a lot in my head too um and i think what it really comes down to for me is that very early on i knew what i didn't want to do and um, I think that was very important. So I, I knew very early that I didn't want to have a job. I really didn't enjoy, I didn't really enjoy school. So that's one of the things that I, I knew very early on. So yeah, I, I never me, did. Me I, sure. I don't really yeah. enjoy formal. I didn't enjoy formal education, but I love to learn. Yeah, but yeah. I, I prefer learning about the things that I like to do. And I prefer to do it like through short courses, <laughs> like crash courses, seminaries, compared to formal education where you really have to just sit down and listen to the teacher. Yeah, sorry. So right, what exactly. you were saying, you were saying. No, no, no. That's exactly it. No, it, it, we're exactly alike because that's, you know, learning is completely different from schooling, right? The so schooling, you're, you're doing it in a certain way where you're getting certain information that you don't have control over. But learning is it's it's different because it's stuff that you're absorbing more information, but you have control over how you're doing it and what the information is. So that's that's a big key difference that I think a lot of people need to realize is that you cannot mistake schooling for learning. Like, and, and in fact, I think schooling hinders learning. If you know if that makes sense at all, because so many people uh, who graduate from school they never learn anything after that, which is it's very sad to to think that you know people just stop their their absorption of knowledge at what's like age 22, 24. And then they just don't learn anything new from it because they're so tired from the school system. After graduating right. college, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to learn anything new. I was so tired from the past 20 years that I was in school. But yeah, you know what kept, kept my love for learning going was not really school, but it was my love for reading because my grandmother and my mother, they both love to read. And so I got them, I got that from them at, at an early age. So even though school was boring for me, when I would get home, I would read like storybooks or different kinds of books, fiction. And then eventually in high school, I would read nonfiction. And that was what kept my love for learning alive. So, you know, thank God for books, right? Because if there weren't interesting books that I 
w- was able to read back then, I don't think I would have kept my love for learning alive. And now there are so many avenues that we can learn, right? Like through podcasts, YouTube. So now I consume content through audio and video format. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it's it's so different now, right? And especially I think the schooling system is kind of very limiting as well, is that they only learn from like one medium, just people talking to you. But some people learn a lot better from like reading different materials, you know, like yourself. And, um, you know, now with the amount of information that we have, you know, I think people can learn, you know, anything that they want to, you know, on the, on their own. So it's not really based on like in the past where success was based on the amount of education you had, you know, whatever degree you had. I think now it's just personal initiative, right? Who wants it more? Because all the information is out there. So I think it was somebody was telling me on the other day that uh, you can actually find an entire uh entire degrees worth of information, you know, entire Yale's degrees worth of information online, the entire curriculum, you can find it online, which is insane. So like you, you can have, you can find that information. It's just now up to you whether or not you're willing to put in the time to do it or not. So I think, I think that's the, that's the big piece. You can't really, you can't really bypass that part is the, the personal initiative. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I read somewhere also, like if you just listen to an audio book, 30 minutes to an hour daily because we commute a lot like for example me whenever i go out to meet clients i commute around between 30 minutes to an hour every day so if i spent that time watching or listening to an audiobook i would have like a phd in four to five years time so isn't that amazing like the time you spent in yeah. your car <laughs> won't be wasted because you would be doing something something productive Oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's one of the coolest things that we have right now. It's just access to information. Like you said, you know, now we can literally, they call it drive time university, right? You can have a PhD degree just from listening to information on, on, you know, on your audio books. And, you know, I I encourage everybody to kind of use that time wisely, you know, whatever time that you have, you know, in the past, you might be listening to music and, you know, music's great, but, you know, if, if you want to build a life that you really want to, you know, you really want to live, you know, maybe sacrifice that and then spend that time learning the stuff that you know you need to be learning, right? That's where the personal initiative and the discipline comes in. And so, you know, for me, like, I only listen to, you know, tapes that I think are going to help me out. So I listen to a lot of Napoleon Hill, uh, you know, personal development, you know, whether if I'm, you know, working out on a run or, you know, in the car driving. So, so I don't even listen to anything else. It's, it's, it's the same take from, from Napoleon Hill that I listened to the, the entire time. So there's, there's a little secret about me, but no, I, I think, you know, just definitely maximize that time because a lot of people will say they don't have enough time, but I don't, I just think they're not looking hard enough to be honest in their day to, to fit in the stuff that they really want to do. Cause if you really want to do something, you, you will find ways to do it. Um, your mind will, will find ways to do it in, in, in you know, subconsciously or consciously just to fill in that time throughout your day yes yes i agree it's not about not having yeah. time to do it rather it's not your priority because if it's important right. to you you will find the time to do it yeah exactly i mean we're all in control of our time in our lives so it's it's not you know much time management versus like priority management so yes, you know you know management. somebody said right so somebody says they don't have enough time what they're really saying is that they have something else in their life that they believe is more important at the moment, which is, I mean, which is okay, but it, you know, you just have to be honest with yourself at that point. Yes, I agree. So going back to EXP Realty, yep. what tools did the Realty give you to allow you to grow your team that fast in just two years? Right. All right. My favorite topic. <laughs> no, but well, yes, but um, because it has, it, you know, I, I, it might sound kind of cliche or it doesn't sound kind of cheesy, but EXP Realty, it has kind of, because of the system that's helped me set up, uh, it's really changed the trajectory of my life. Uh, you know, I obviously made the decision to go into real estate, but it was this opportunity that kind of really propelled me to go forward versus me staying in a different direction, essentially. But, <laughs> but uh, in terms of the tools that they're able to offer me, so one of the things that we do is that EXP Realty has a, like I was saying, a really cool team building model built in place. So it's the revenue share model. Um, if you haven't heard of it, you know, maybe, you know, in the real estate space, it's very similar to the Keller Williams. It's actually based directly off of the Keller Williams profit sharing model. 
And um, if you're not familiar with that, um, it's very similar to traditional network marketing models where you're able to sponsor another salesperson to the company and you're able to earn a, a portion of the commission paid to you. So the way we're able to do that is from uh, the company itself. So the company, uh, we're a cloud-based company and uh, we don't have any operating expenses essentially aside from you know when an agent closes a transaction, which is crazy to think about because I, I just got back from their, their shareholders event uh, you know, just uh, just last week, and we apparently were the only comp- real estate company in the in the world right now that has no debt. So we don't like at, at the size that we are, we're operating on, um, we actually have no operating debt, which is crazy to think about. But you know, it makes sense because like we're, what we're size cloud. are you at right now? Yeah, so we're we're operational in all fifty United uh, in all fifty states in the U.S. and twenty different countries as well around the world, uh, and that amounts up to eighty three thousand agents total. So uh, we're a global brand. That's a lot of agents. <coughs> and, yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah, for for that many agents, we we have we are able to operate without any debt and very low operating expenses. So that's why the company is able to essentially offer us the value uh, at a very low price. So. One of the key things for me is that I can now go out there and build a team of agents without having to have an office. I, I don't have to provide the training. I don't have to provide the, uh, the tools and the resources and the systems. And I don't have to hold up any of the legal and liability side of things. So that's one of the coolest things about the company is that you can essentially go out there and build your own brokerage within this system. But the company is able to provide all the tools on your behalf without you having to spend that money up front as an investment, uh, if that makes sense. So, so you know, one of the things basically what we, you yeah. do is when you invite people, because you're the one to, who, who will share to them about how it works, right? And then yes. once the agent says, okay, I'm in, what do I need to do, to do first? Because that's the most critical part. When the, mm-hmm. the agent first joins the realty, they have to sell as fast as possible in order to keep that fire burning, in order to keep <coughs> them excited. Yeah. So what's the next st- step once the agent is in? Right. Yeah. So we have uh, what we have is for new agents is that as a company, we have a new agent mentorship program. So we actually assign a brand new agent to somebody who's experienced in the business just to make sure that they have their, you know, everything in place and they have somebody to talk to um, who isn't, uh, you know, who, you know, so they're not feeling overwhelmed at the beginning. So, so that's not, one of the it's things not gonna that be we actually, the team leader, I mean, right, yeah. the, the recruiter. So it's not right, gonna it's, be, it's gonna be, oh, so it's you. Who will be assisting? No, them. it, it no, it's actually somebody else. So it's, it's somebody else that's completely local to them. So this is somebody local in their market that they get assigned to them to work with on their first three transactions. So that's one of the things that they get they get help with as a brand new agent. And then uh, what we do on our side is that we help them plug into the systems and the training. So in the very beginning, like within the first, <coughs> you know, be, really before they even onboard, we first get a we get a good grasp of what their goals are and what they're comfortable doing and they're not comfortable doing. So one of the things we're really big on is mindset because we understand that um, whatever strategy that you use, uh, as long as you're able to commit to it long enough, it's going to work. You know, obviously some strategies are going to be better than others, but, you know, if you're not willing to commit to a certain strategy. So one of the things we say is that, you know, if you don't work, then nothing else works. But if you work, then whatever you choose to do will work in the long run. So we really implement that a lot, but we get, <coughs> we get them plugged in into our systems pretty fast. So um, we have about 80 hours of training in the cloud for them to attend. And then we make sure that they pick out the ones that are they're willing to commit to long term. So have an agent who's maybe interested more in the door knocking side. Uh, then we make sure they're plugging into that very quickly. We're helping them on that end. We have an agent who's more interested in social media, then that's a different direction that they have to go so in So there well. are so many trainings that are available for new agents. And then it will they, they basically just need to choose what they want to focus on. Yes, yes, that's exactly it. So yeah, we have, uh, you know, we have, uh, like I said, 80, over 80 hours of training a week taught by some of the top agents in the entire country. So it's still so it's under, really up to them. under EXP Realty or you outsource your training videos? <clears throat> no, it, it, all the trainings that we do is in-house. So it's it's done by the top agents of the company. So that's one of the other cool things that, that you know that we have is because they're agent owners. Um, they're actually incentivized to coach other agents in the company so that the entire ownership stake in the, in the company rises to the whole. So, and because our top agents are actually the ones that hold big positions of... Uh, EXP stock, 
through our stock award system, they're, they're called icon agents. So what, what they're able to do is that um, they're able to earn their entire cap back. So they pay a, a cap into the company, but if they sell enough houses, they earn their entire cap back in stock awards. Um, so those are their, our top agents. And then they're, they're the ones teaching the classes. So like I said, um, they're gonna be specializing in different areas. And it's just really up to the new agent themselves to choose uh, which ones that uh, they, they're more gravitating uh, towards essentially. Like for example, <coughs> if one agent is gonna wants to focus on condominiums or housing or raw land, so there is yeah. a, an icon or a, a mentor that they can tap into to train them or like the videos of that person. They can watch the videos so that they can move forward with whatever they're interested in. Because real estate is very diverse, right? And usually right. like there are some agents who want to focus on like specific areas, like maybe luxury market or versus right. like, the more affordable market. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. That's, that's, that's it. Yep. That's exactly it. Is that, um, we all, because there's so many icon agents of the company, they're all going to be specializing in different areas. And one of the coolest things that, you know, the training, the way that we do our training is that the icon agents are actually teaching it live inside of a, inside of a cloud-based training system. So, um, it, it's very similar. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's the, it's the metaverse of real estate, if, if, if you will. Um, and they're actually teaching the classes live. So this is actually very interactive for the new agents. They're able to ask questions almost as they were in there in person. And it's a little, and it's definitely more interactive than Zoom where, you know, there could just be a lot of people and it would be very hard for somebody to, you know, maybe voice an opinion or ask a specific question than it would be, you know, in that kind of setting as well. So yes, definitely, definitely a lot of, a lot of different trainings to choose from all the way, like you said, from the luxury market to more affordable housing to the investing market as well. Since you mentioned that you're also you also have branches in other countries, like how does the trainings work there? Because every market is different. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's one of the things that we have as uh, with our training is that it's broken up into two different categories. Is that one of the categories is overall skill set training, right? So those are the taught by the top agents of the company. They're overlapping skill sets. So like somebody wanted to teach you know, social media, how to get yourself out there on using video, you know, it, it's pretty much, you know, very similar concepts, doesn't matter what place you're in, in the world, right? Might be a little bit different, but very similar in, in concept for that specific topic. And we, we do have local trainings as well. So these are very specific. We have them for each state, each Canadian province, and then each country as well. So those are taught by specific trainers that we have on our, on our agent staff in that country specifically just to make sure that agent in that area is getting that local support as well. So <clears throat> like, like you're saying, real estate can be a lot different in different areas. So that's why we have that in place as well is that just to make sure all the agents are in compliance with local laws and making sure that all the agents are doing the things that, you know, essentially that are relevant to their market in their local region as well. Do you have branches in Asia as well or in Europe aside from Canada and the U S yeah, we do. So uh, one of our biggest markets right now is actually in India. We're very popular in India, uh, believe it or not. Yes. So how does that work? Like if a, an Indian local wants to set up an EXP branch, oh no, there's no there's no physical office, right? So everything right. will just be online. So how, how will that work? Like there's an Indian local who wants to become a sales agent of EXP. So what, what does he need oh. to do? Right. Yeah. So it, it's very similar to anybody else who, you know, are in a U.S. or a different country as well. Uh, it's almost the same process as me. So they will need to sign up um, with a sponsor and that sponsor can be anybody at EXP anywhere in the world. So it's not confined locally to India. And that's one of the coolest things. So is that we're able to build our teams outside of our local geographic areas into other countries. And then we're able to collaborate that way as well. So <clears throat> they will sign up. And whoever is the person that essentially was most influential for them to join the company, they will name them as their sponsor. That's the person and the team that they'll get to work with. And then there'll be an agent at the company, uh, you know, in India. And then they can choose whether to work from home or they can choose to work in our uh, in a shared office space, uh, which we have a we have a a a working relationship with Regis, which is a shared office space that's available uh, in in certain countries around the world. So it's up to them, but. It's, it's really that simple is that, you know, you would just sign up, you would pick a sponsor, and then 
and then you know just move on with the process as well so and then you you would set up all the all the things that you would you know in that country essentially as an agent whatever is, is required of you so you will that agent need for example in of course in the u.s you, you have all the permits and licensing and stuff so yes. in india even even if you set up like an online realty they would still need to apply for all the permits and licensing to practice yes under so that Right. So that's that's one of the things that we have left to the country specifically. So what that means is that um, it, it we, we're just a brokerage. We don't change the laws of, of a country's real estate practices. So whatever, you know, that country is required of, you know, an agent to work with a brokerage, we're going to have to require it. So like, so it's for up example, to the, like, the agent to, to sort it out. Yes. Yes. It's up to the agent. So like, yeah. So like an example, like, you know, in... In Portugal, you would need a real estate license very similar to, you know, in the U.S., uh, same thing. You need a salesperson's license, and then you would be able to work with the brokerage. Then that's that's how that works in Portugal. In India, you don't need a license. Anybody can just practice real estate. Really? So there's, there's registration. No there? Yeah, there, there's no licensing there. So that's anybody amazing. can just... <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of countries like that. India is one, and then Mexico, I believe, is another one. Um, and that's why we've been able to grow so fast is now that, you know, we, we're removing that because, you know, in, in that kind of space where it, what happens is that a lot of agents are competing with big brands and they're starting from scratch. They don't necessarily have a lot to work with. But now that we've come in and we were able to provide the systems from day one, you know, as a, to an individual, they're now able to partner with this system and they're able to compete uh, with some of the bigger brands who are more established as well. And But they don't have to invest upfront the money to get the office to get the agents and get the marketing as well. So that's why we've been popular in some of these other countries as well with a lot of ambitious people, but they might not have, you know, the capital to start up on to compete with some of the bigger brands. Yeah. Being a startup <laughs> is really very challenging. Like you have to have a lot yeah. of resources and experience and spend a lot of time and effort to start up something. Go Going to the rates, right. like are the rates different between like a sales agent and a real estate broker? Like, what are the standard uh, rates there in the U.S.? Uh, it, it, you mean like the uh, the commission rates the commission, that you're yeah, getting paid? Yeah, commission. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's pretty much the same uh, on the commission side because, uh, you know, for, from a client's perspective, a uh, a real estate broker and a real estate agent uh, are, are the same thing. So to them, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and in the U.S., most real estate brokers who hold a broker's license don't practice real estate anymore. They're just managing their teams, uh, running a brokerage, whatever, whatever it may be. So uh, about, you know, in terms of broker and agent, it's the same. There's there's not a lot of difference. A broker might charge a little bit less because they're not splitting it with an agent. They're keeping 100% of it, uh, you know, <clears throat> because it's their own business. But uh, usually it's about 3% of the sales price. Uh, obviously, I think that's going to change in the next six to 18 months because of the way the market is shaping up. Um, but typical, <laughs> typical is it, rate is, is, is go lower? Uh, yes, there has been speculation that, uh, you know, the market will take a, 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 take a downturn. And usually what happens in that is that agents will be competing for listings and they will have to lower their commissions a little bit, especially in higher price point markets to, to stay competitive essentially, uh, which is, not not the best thing, but you know sometimes it's just it's a necessity for for the agents in, in that kind of scenario. It's very very similar to the rates, the commission rates here in the Philippines as well. Like the, the standard rate is five percent, and the house or the realty gets like one percent. The broker yeah. gets four, and the agents get get uh, the agent gets like three to three point five, depending on the brokerage, like what. Yeah. What at what performance he's giving? So the performance also matters. Like if it's a top agent, then it's gonna he's gonna get a higher rate. So is it really? the same similar there? Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> so it it is similar. So a lot of the top agents who are doing a lot of transactions, they bring a lot of business to the brokerage, and then they're getting better deals. Like they're sweeter deals essentially from the brokerage, and uh, they're getting higher splits. So they're getting keep like 90 to 95% of their commissions versus a newer agent who might only keep 60 to 70% of the commission. And very typical uh, of that. And then we've, you know, as, as our, as our company, we've kind of figured out a way to against that, which is everybody is in the same split, but if you're performing really well, like I said, you just get, 
you get your cap back in stock. So that's, that's a different incentive, but you no, know, that's, that's right. You know, if you're performing better, if you're more of a top producer, uh, the broker is definitely going to reward you more with higher commissions. They want to keep you, they want to keep your business and um, just, just very typical, uh, very right. typical way it of is. doing business. I think, you know, around the world, <laughs> they want to keep their top agents, right? Yes. By giving them more, <laughs> but in EXP, it's different. Like instead of giving them more in terms of commission, commission rate, you're giving EXP is giving the top agents like the, in uh, the stock incentive. Yes. Yes. Stock awards. So, um, <clears throat> there, so a cap, like I was, I keep talking about this cap thing. Um, I don't know if that, um, that, that's rain. That makes sense. Uh, the, the, the are you, are you familiar with what, what a cap is? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's my fault. But, um, <clears throat> a cap is essentially, um, the amount of money an agent would pay to their brokerage in splits before they don't, they no longer have to pay for the remainder of the year. If that makes sense. So, um, yeah. like as an example, yeah. So like, as an example, um, I have an, like, we have an 80, 20 split. So we pay the company 20% every time we can close a transaction. Um, and then our cap is $16,000. So, uh, once we paid $16,000 in splits, we no longer have to pay that split. It, we're on a hundred percent commission for the rest of the year. Really? That's very different yes. from here. <laughs> here we don't have a cap. It's like every right. time you make a sale, you have to give the realty its share, which is 20%. There's no cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, that, I think that's one of the things that we do a little bit differently, right? So that's, that's a cap. And I think, and then not, I, so it's a, <laughs> a cap good is, incentive though for agents to like, oh, I need to work hard so I can reach my cap and then I'll get a hundred percent of whatever's left for the rest of the year. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's a great incentive for agents to go out there and perform their best. Um, and it's and it's very it's the cap is pretty typical uh, for brokerages in the states, <coughs> just because they so it's a yeah thing. yeah <coughs> it, it it's pretty common in the states for brokerages to have have caps um, just because they figure out a way for for the the accounting to work and and, and the business to work. Well, I guess uh, with it's, certain... a, it's a way to win because this is the amount that the realty needs to survive and to earn. Yes. And this is the amount that the agents can earn. And then after that, they can get everything. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they figured out a way, essentially, like how much they need to earn from each agent to be able to survive. Exactly. But that, that's, that will depend on the number of agents, right? Like the, the, right. the smaller the realty, the bigger the cap. Yes. Or is that how it works? Exactly. Oh, yeah. So um, a lot of the smaller groups don't have caps. And that's that's because, you know, that's exactly it. They don't have enough agents to be able to account for that. So a lot of the bigger companies, like, you know, mostly what we've seen caps from is like bigger national brands like Remax or Keller Williams and other like Century 21 as well is, is another one. Because they have so many agents across the country, yeah. they're they can able afford to have to. A, they can afford to have a right. They can, yeah. <laughs> but what's the usual right, exactly. cap of, a, of like one agent? <laughs> For across all these yeah. different realties, like is there like a, a range? Yeah, there is. So we're on. We're definitely on the low end. Um, surprise, surprise. But uh, usually a cap is <laughs> usually a cap is uh, around twenty twenty thousand on the low end uh, to forty thousand on the high end, depending on uh, the market they're in. So if you're you're in a very expensive market, um, forty thousand dollars is a very common cap for you know agents in New York and California because they're selling, you know, higher price point houses. So it's justified. <clears throat> and, and it takes the offices in that area to, you know, more expenses to run as well. That's why they have a higher cap, you know, like a lower price point market, like Texas actually is considered one of the lower price point markets right now, <clears throat> you know, $20,000 cap is pretty typical. So anywhere from 20,000 to, to 40,000, I would say is, is a pretty good range for, for caps in the U S. So that's about like a 20,000 is equivalent to about a million, a million passes here in the Philippines. Yeah. Is that, is that, would that like, I don't know, I don't know how that translates well, uh, you know, if, if the brokerages in the Philippines would, would implement something similar, would that be a little bit higher or a little bit lower? Well, a 20,000 cap would not, it, it's, it's not for like the top agents. It's like a regular. Mm -hmm. A regular agent can uh, can achieve it because it's own would only amount to about 1.6 million per month yeah and properties here are like seven eight million here in 
Cagayan de Oro. So it would be easy to reach. Yeah. Maybe set yeah, a higher and, and, cap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, like a cap, like an agent, mm-hmm. like in the US, like a capping agent is a typical agent, if that makes sense. So like mm-hmm. an agent who caps isn't a top agent, right? Like y- y- a capping agent should be somebody like who's typically selling real estate full time should be able to cap at, at, at a 20, on a $20,000 cap on a, like a 70, 30 split. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So Usually how long do your agents take to cap? Like, how many months in a year is the average <coughs> for a relatively new agent, like an average performing agent? Yeah. So like an average performing agent, like I said, um, they should be capping anywhere from, uh, you know, six months to, to a year. So sometimes an agent hit their cap at the end of the year, maybe they have two or three deals mm-hmm. that they do that are hundred percent as, as a newer agent. Um, but there are outliers for sure. So um, it typically, you know, about three to six months, but like outliers, we've seen agents cap within their first deal um, just because they're in a high price point market. Right. So that, yeah, that's yeah. something that we can't, yes, yeah, they're, they're, no, they're in a they're in a price point where it's like, yeah. same yeah. here, <laughs> same here in the Philippines, like yeah. in the Metro cities, like earning or closing 50 to 70 million per month would be good for high performers but for example here in Cagayan de Oro which is not yet a metro city like a top performer would typically close between 20 to 30 million a month and maybe like an average performer would close between 5 to 7 million per month yeah yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's going to vary for, for everybody, but like, like, you know, like we were just saying, like, you know, the market does depend on it and then there's outliers for sure. It's just people coming in brand new in the industry and they just completely become a top producer within their first year. Um, it has happened. So, um, but yeah, uh, that, that is one of the things that, that we, we do a little bit differently. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, every, every you know, le- learning, learning a little bit new, new things every time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We actually plan to travel to Australia next year to check out their market because my brother is living there. And aside from the U.S., Australia also has a mature real estate market. So we want to do research there. Yeah. Yeah, Australia is, uh, you know, it's a big market. And I think they're they're pretty expensive as well. I think they're one of the higher price point markets, right? Yeah. They are pretty expensive. So aside from, so let's say the agent is already in and then they're already Mm -hmm. training, they've watched a lot of the videos already. How do you keep them motivated and consistently performing? Because some people (coughs) drop out, like what's your percentage? Like maybe not your personal percentage, but maybe the realty, you might know other salespersons or leading people. What's the percentage that drops out, the percentage that continues and the percentage that really excels? in the industry. Yeah. So we have a, like in terms of attrition, we have a pretty good attrition rate compared to the comp like or compared to the industry um, because there's a very high attrition rate for agents, especially in the U S just people jumping from real realty to realty. Yeah. Um, or, you know, would try out think, being a salesperson for one or three, one to three months. And then, okay, it's not for me. I'm going to get a full-time job, another job. You know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially if so they I don't think, close their say, uh, their first deal within the first three months. Yes, that really that is very important. Yeah, it's gonna be really affecting their decision because of course they they need to earn right, and if they're not gonna right. earn, then that's that's gonna make them want to drop out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So in terms of the percentage wise for us, I think for every five agents that we have. Um, one, one leaves, just completely leaves the industry, leave the company. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, it's a five to one ratio. Um, I haven't done the, the I'm, I'm just saying this off the top of my head from, yeah. you know, what I can remember. But, uh, other than that, <clears throat> you know, I think we were talking about this last time as well, in terms of performing agents, I think around 30, about a yeah, third of them 30. who are, are, are very, yeah, very consistently performing. And then the other, other 20% are kind of wishy-washy. Some of them are actually part-time as well. That's one of the things that, you know, I think we, I don't know if you guys have a lot of part-time agents in the Philippines, but in the U.S. there's, there's a lot of agents who are doing it's, this it's part-time the same, because, it's the same. yeah. <laughs> like we have more part-time agents than full-time. There are only, yeah. I don't know, maybe 20% who really goes to do it full-time. Yeah. And, I mean, and honestly, I, I would suggest a lot of people to start out part-time just to try it first. Well, almost I did, I did that. Aside. I started right, part-time. Yeah. 
<coughs> even though it was really my intention to do it full time because I really wanted to be in this industry like long term. But I started part time because I knew that if I was going to be a new real estate broker, I knew I wouldn't be able to like close a lot of deals yet since, you know, I'm still new, learning curve. So that's why I did it part time for about one to two years. And then when I started having more clients, closing more deals, that's when I resigned. But I also prepared yeah. like this <coughs> uh, amount of money that I needed. Like, okay, I needed to save this amount of money so that if I couldn't close deals and then I no longer have a job, I won't, you know, go hungry. So that's what I did. Like right. I say, I saved up like an, uh, uh, a fund for myself so that I could continue to pay my bills while learning about the industry. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, that's like the, the perfect way to go. Um, just because, um, and, and like, I love what you said about the intention as well. So you had the intention to go full time. So a lot of people don't have that intention. That's completely different. If you know, it's good. It's okay to start off part time if you're putting in, you know, if you have the intention to go full time later on, because, you know, it's just a financial thing for everybody personally, whether it makes sense or not, because real estate, it's kind of a slower business. You don't, it's not like selling socks where you can just sell a pair of socks a day, <coughs> you know, and within your first day. <laughs> so it, it takes a while, the relationships to build deals are typically longer to close. So usually like about six to even like some people have like 12 months of, of finances before they jump into it full time. So um, that does make sense. And I always say to like, you know, part-time agents, you can be part-time, but you can put in full-time effort part-time, if that makes sense at all. So you can only be spending like four hours a week on real estate, but are you spending those four hours with your full intention, your full energy, very focused, or are you kind of just goofing off, you know, maybe doing admin tasks and not really paying attention. So it's up to you to decide that. So a lot of people have come out like very successful starting out part-time and then moving into very successful full-time agents as well. So. Okay. Yeah. So <coughs> what do you have going on right now? Like where can people find you, especially those who want to tap into you with regards to real estate there in Texas? Right. Yeah. So um, I have my, like I was saying, I have my own podcast. It's called the free life agents podcast. And uh, you can find it on, I would say, Apple and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So we have uh, episodes every Tuesday <coughs> here. Uh, Tuesday it will be Tuesday here in the uh, uh, in the states. But yeah, we have episodes every Tuesday. And then for people who want to reach me, um, I'm everywhere. So I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. It's just my first and last name. And then, um, you know, LinkedIn as well. So those are the major platforms that I'm on. And then I also write a, a, write a real estate blog for real estate agents uh, really around the world called Agent Wealth Hustle. Um, again, it's called Agent Wealth Hustle. And uh, it's just a real estate blog on, you know, how real estate agents can uh, invest in real estate, build their wealth, and, you know, share a little bit more about uh, what we're doing here at EXP as well, which is, you know, what I'm very passionate about. Do you have a <laughs> vlog as well, like, do you have a video format for your podcast? <coughs> not uh, not at the moment. So we do Instagram reels. It will be the video format for my podcast, but um, I'm working on my YouTube channel and uh, getting that up because we do have the content. It's just now up to me to upload all of them uh, online as well. So uh, I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, and, um, you know, I definitely have that up uh, in the very near future. Okay. We're excited for that because it's, yeah. You know, YouTube is a search engine, so it would be easier yes. to search you if you had if you were if you're on YouTube. Anyway, it's very right. easy to edit, right? Because you're just detached. Like <laughs> whatever your podcast video is, just upload the whole thing on YouTube. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's why podcasting is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, very very good content, and you could have a, a lot of content as well distributed for uh, for a lot of different platforms. Okay, so. Thank you so much for your time, Kobe. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, uh, no, it was great. It was great being here. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. It was a really fun conversation. It's always great talking to you. So uh, thank you so much for, for having me on. Yeah, sure. Let's have another catch up podcast, maybe in two or three months. Yeah, yeah sure. I love that. I love that. You know, I'm always happy to stay in touch and, and see and see what's going on, you know, two or three months from now, see, see where we're at. So I'm super excited about that. With our respective real estate markets, you know, maybe our next podcast can be about what's the, the state of the, your, the real estate market in your country, in our yeah. respective countries. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see where, 
where, where I am now, like where our real estate market is now, two months from now. I don't know if it's going to drop uh, as fast, but you never know. So it'll be interesting to see where we are at two months yeah, from now. Yeah, and maybe we can get someone from <laughs> India. You know, we can compare like the different Oh, areas. yeah, that'd be like, interesting. Maybe India and another Asian country. You know, so our yeah. podcast would be like all over the world. Yeah, ah, I, I love that idea. That's actually, like that's a, actually a really interesting like idea. Like a market update. <laughs> You know, maybe like a quarterly yeah. market update, like Philippines, the U.S., India, like Japan, Singapore, you know, and mm -hmm. basically anywhere in the world. Since EXP <coughs> Realty has a lot of agents, then you can really get them exposed through this channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's a, I think that's a great idea. I love it. And um, that's that's actually one of the reasons why, why I started my podcast. And I love interviewing agents from around the world as well, because I think we're all we're all very similar and then we can all learn a lot from each other as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be our next podcast. We're going to have two guests. Yes. So yes. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun and interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah, you so much for your time and see you again in the next video. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>